Right, so uh, thank you. A very good turnout for this meeting, which might be my last one. Um, there is a planning meeting next week, which I think we all need to be at. Uh, uh, problem being that I'm, I'm going to be in a campsite somewhere, so I don't know whether, whether the system will allow me to get in or not, but I will try. So welcome and uh, welcome our guests. Um, so uh, just in terms of, uh, we've got Tony Hoyle, I can see there. And, and uh, Robert is trying to join. Okay. Uh, but I don't know what's going on there. But he's not, I can see that he's trying to get in. Okay. And Mr. L. Jones. Hello there. Hello there. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. No, things are so good on Zoom. Right then. So uh, just to uh, apologies for absence, Emma. Um, I've had apologies from Roy, the long-standing apologies. I've also had apologies from Paul King and Liz Holland, um, who've both got other things on this evening. Okay. So they're for our new council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're happy to accept those apologies. Yeah. Sure Paul and then Liz don't have to apologise, but um, yeah, we're happy to accept Roy's. Yeah. Okay. Um, declarations of interest then. We've got a very busy agenda and it'll be a surprise if, if there's not something there that we've got as a, conf a conflict of interest. But uh, if, you, if you don't declare it now, you know, please shout uh, when the items come up later on in the agenda. Right, minutes of previous meetings then. So we've got two of them from the uh, 16th of March, uh, full council meeting there. And it was myself, David Chappell, Ian, Val, uh, Jerry, Clive, Peter, and Malcolm were in attendance. Uh, if those of you there, were you happy with the minutes? Yep. Yep. Okay, then. So we got a proposer and a seconder. So I'll propose them. A seconder. Okay, I think Clive was slightly quicker there. And all those in favour? Okay, thank you. So they're, they're signed and ready to go. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the next one then is for the uh, 30th of, uh, of um, March. And that was the one where we were looking at the uh, money purely for the garage. So that was- I'll propose it. Yeah, okay. David's proposed, I'll second them. All right. Okay. Sorry I missed that then. <laughs> All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Right. So, uh, public participation then. Uh, those people that are here, has anybody wanted to speak? Tony Hoyle, yes. Um, I just wonder how you'd like me to contribute to the meeting. I've prepared two short statements, if required. One about uh, my role as the um, parish path warden and another one for an update on Fletton Field. Yeah, well, uh, if you can do it in three minutes, Tony. Uh, yes, one minute for one and two minutes for the other. Okay then. <laughs> yeah. No, nobody's going to start a clock. <laughs> go on. What now? Yep. Yes. Go on. Oh, okay. Well, um, on the everybody knows I'm Tony Hoyle. Um, I was pleased to be appointed as the parish path warden in January. But after contacting North Ants Highways for an information pack, I was disappointed to learn that the County Council no longer supported the scheme. Um, I've raised a number of questions with the Local Access Forum about the way the scheme's been managed, but I've not yet received answers and I'll continue to pursue them. Um, I'm happy to continue to monitor the public rights of way in and around Oundle on an informal basis. There are 10 in the parish and I've walked all of them in the last few months and raised a couple of minor issues on Fix My Street. But there is one issue that concerns me. Um, the authorities had, has a, a long list of requests to modify the definitive map, which shows public rights of way in Northamptonshire that they've not been dealt with. One of these is in Oundle. It's a request to reinstate the route from Milton Road to the corner of Fletton Field and then on to Fletton Way. This was raised nine years ago and has not yet been investigated. Uh, the explanation is that um, lack of staff, but I intend also to follow this up with the local access forum. Thank you, Jim. That's You're all going. from the path warden. Yeah. 
Um, now there's an agenda item for Flatton Field. Shall I read that then? Yeah, I think it's best now because in the formally in the meeting, you know, um, uh, probably okay. not allowed to I'm, talk. But... I've I've written it so that I can read it as quickly as possible. Um, now I represent a group of people who've reinvigorated the campaign to save Flatton Field. This is an informal group um, under the banners of Transition Oundle and Blooming Oundle. The previous Oundle Recreation and Green Spaces group, which led the campaign previously, now exists in name only. Um, I think everybody knows where Fletton Field is, behind the police houses on Glapthorne Road, between Fletton House and uh, the chapel. Um, it represents about 40% of the publicly accessible green space within the town. Our aim is to persuade North Northamptonshire Council that Flettenfield belongs to Oundle. It should be used as a managed green space with a variety of outdoor activity, activities for local people to enjoy and benefit from. It should not be sold for development. Maybe wishful thinking, but it's worth a try. Um, so far, we've produced a drawing to illustrate the vision prepared briefing notes to make the case to councillors and key officers at North Northamptonshire Council when the time comes, prepared a press release, refreshed the website and the Facebook page, and we've placed a couple of information boards at the two entrances to the field. Um, we will continue to publicise, promote and lobby for the campaign. Um, now, the, the current issue in January, Emma submitted an application to East North Ants Council to renew the listing of Flattenfield as an asset of community value. The deadline for the decision was the 4th of April, which is just two working days after East North Ants expired. Um, and unfortunately, East North Ants Council failed to deal with it, deal with the application. So we're now in a very unusual position and we're wondering how to proceed with the application for uh, to, to renew the um, asset of community value listing. I mean, I'd add that we're, we're grateful to, for the support that the town council has provided so far and hope that this will continue. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. I know we've got it as an agenda item later on. If there's anybody here who wants to talk on that, but uh, you know, if it, if, if you know, hold it till later on if possible. Rupert, you wanted to say something? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I only suggest to suggest that the town council simply send in a fresh application, tacking on the previous one, uh, and uh, and the, the latest correspondence you had with East North Hans before officers gave up the ghost. Okay. Because so it happens, uh, I had some discussions with key North North Hans people simply to flag up the issue so they'll be well aware of it. Yep, thank you, Rupert. So we'll see when, when we come around to the agenda item, we'll talk that through uh, as, an, as an option. Okay. Um, okay, thank you very much, Tony. Uh, so if you, you hang on and we'll come around to it as, as an agenda item in, uh, in a wee while. Uh, right, just in terms of other uh, other interested parties, is there anybody else wanting to speak at this point? If otherwise, we'll carry on with the agenda. Thank you. Uh, right, so we've got consideration of requests from interested parties. I'm assuming Emma, there's no... I have any, no. no. Okay, right. Um, in terms of the Mayor's report, uh, really all I want to say at this point um, is that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, this is my last uh, formal meeting. Um, you know that I've had a great time over three years, and I'm a bit sorry because of other reasons that I can't stay on with the council. Uh, one of the most impressive thing has been the the fellow councillors, and you know it is really the way that we're able to debate, you know, and uh, you know achieve consensus on this. We don't always get the things that we want out of it, but. All of the discussions, from my point of view, have been extremely enjoyable, and you know I have really enjoyed this time. And I must add that this period of time where we've used Zoom has actually ended up working out better for me 
than uh, when we had the, 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 the formality in the council chamber. And a lot of that is down to the discipline and the behavior of the, the fellow councillors. So as a, as a sort of you know, an end, which isn't the end, I've got another couple of weeks to go, but you know, just wanted to say, you know, I've really enjoyed this. Uh, David. And I'm sure I represent the views of other councillors, but we would like to thank you for two year service as mayor uh, in difficult circumstances and your leadership has been outstanding during that time. So we are going to miss you. And uh, <laughs> thank, thank you, you Tony. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Enough of that then. <laughs> Thanks very much. I know you get embarrassed, but it's going to be said. <laughs> No, I, I guess the you know the one that I didn't mention there is is you know that Emma and her staff. Yep, definitely. Yeah, you know, they they allow us to do the fun bit of it all, <laughs> you know, because they do the other stuff. So you know, of course they that. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Tony. Right. Uh, town matters. Then uh, consider the issue of the footpath closures. This is the one that, um, um, that, that I think <coughs> what Tony was talking about earlier. Mm. Right. So, Emma, go on, take us... Yeah, well, I think this is one, the one that um, David asked to be raised at uh, the last meeting, and I, I didn't put it on the agenda. Um, so it's... David, it's your um, agenda if you want to start. Uh, well, I'll try to. Um, as Emma says, this arose not at our last meeting in March, but at, as a result of our meeting in February. February. And I have to confess, the meeting in February was now quite some time ago. Uh, and I don't remember <coughs> in full detail everything that I would have liked to have looked at back in February when we couldn't because it wasn't specifically an agenda item to, to, to take forward. But it kind of echoes what uh, Tony Hoyle was saying to us earlier. Um, we seem to have an extraordinary situation with footpaths which has enabled action to be taken in relation to public footpaths without the public seemingly knowing that anything is being done about it. Um, now, transparency is all, and this is about the most opaque piece of um, mismanagement I've ever heard of. Uh, that is until Tony told us that it has so far taken the local authority nine years not to succeed in dealing with something earlier which if it isn't a record, it jolly well ought to be. Um, we do have a new authority now, and it does seem to me that as a council, we may very well want to take forward with the new authority our concerns about the whole situation with, with footpaths in the locality and arguably more generally. More generally. Uh, we might also want to involve NALC in these issues because if there is any question of trying to uh, lobby for a change in national legislation to force local authorities to engage in proper consultation before they start interfering with public rights of way, uh, then I think we've got to get NALC on board. Um, so those were really my preliminary thoughts. Uh, now, we're fortunate that Tony has stayed with us and it may well be that he would like to say something more, and if he would like to do so, perhaps the mayor will allow him in for that purpose. But I did spot at least one other councillor with a hand raised earlier. I think Peter had, had his hand raised, so I'm quite happy to see what others have to say about this. Thank you. Peter? Well, I, I would thoroughly back David on this. I think what we've got to try and do is, is save every footpath and every right away that we have in this area because it's really really important that uh, you know we don't lose anything because we are losing a lot in Aundel and, and the surrounding areas and the only way to go forward is as you know I'm, 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 I'm uh, uh, not carrying on in May uh, with the Aundel Council is to get the Aundel Council itself the Town Council to push very hard uh, anybody in the uh, North Northamptonshire Council uh, that ca they can because this is really important to local people uh, mm. in this area because they need places to walk and if any places are closed down or stopped 
uh, from walking by you know, a farmer or, or, or a landowner, uh, you know, it, it's not very good. And I think we should really, well, I think Andal Town Council from May should really work hard towards getting uh, some sort of uh, clear indication of what's going to happen in the area and then move forward in trying to, to, to connect with everybody that will work for it to get a clear understanding and to stop any closures. Yeah, okay, thank you. And then uh, Clive? Uh, yeah, and no, I think you'll find uh, that this is a, a national issue. Um, it's happening all over the country. I met someone the other day when I was out with my dogs um, in the, who lived in Titchmarsh and their footpath from on the other side of the 605 that goes down to the Titchmarsh Nature Reserve, the footpaths there have been closed. The entrances to them have been closed off because they border onto land owned by the Merchant Venturers um, Guild. And they, they are, it's a blatant right, uh, infringement of, of, foot, of bridleways and footpaths. They're actually shutting them down. And landowners all over the country are actually doing this and it's uh it's something it's i hate to sort of head back into sort of levelers institution but it's 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 a public right and i think we need to adjust as one small voice especially with the new north hans uh the new council we have to push this hard because this falls back into our other little remit of the um with the rural aspect of it you know, people like to walk. This is yeah. one of the beauties of Andal, and and it's a and it's uh, and it's happening all over the country. We have to put up some sort of statement straight away. Okay, so I know that we haven't got our uh, councillors on uh, NNC yet, so we haven't got anybody to to lobby. Uh, one of them might be present with us at the moment. Um, sorry, Rupert wants to speak. Yes, please, Mr. Mayor. I think what Arundel Town Council could do properly, pretty well within a matter of days, um, is for Emma to send a clearly worded letter to Adele Wiley. I'll spell out her name. A-D-E-L-E -E Wiley, capital W-Y-L-I-E, who is the Director of Legal and Democratic Services at North Northamptonshire Council. Okay, so that you. would be, as it were, an opening statement, which you would then follow up at leisure, if there is such a thing, uh, with a strongly worded letter to Tom, and copied to our, our, all three incoming N NNC councillors for Arundel, whoever they may be. Okay. Uh, so, okay, I, um, I'm feeling that the um, NCALC bit of what David said originally is, is, is very important in what's going on here. Um, and as much as you know, it, it's a, to me that's bigger than the footpaths. It's the fact that you know parish and local councils aren't getting uh, their fair hearing on these issues. And so I would recommend you know to the the, the incoming council that we use Danny Moody as the the, the the point of discussion on this issue and several others. And then move it forward into you know once we've had the election, as Rupert said, you know with the approach to um, NNC. So use this point of time in between, you know, for Tony, you know, as our, our pathways warden, you know, and then Andal Town Council in support. If everybody's happy with that, you know, I, I know I'm, I'm kicking the ball down the road a little bit, but because we haven't got NNC in place at the moment, we're a bit. We've got to start getting uh, uh, ducks in a row. David. Well, could we perhaps flag up the possibility that for our meeting in June, I think next month will be a pretty packed month for yeah. other reasons. <clears throat> Maybe yeah. for our meeting in June, we should be asking whoever is the most relevant person from NNC to come and talk to us uh, about footpaths yeah. and allow us to question them. Whether they'll take up That's the invitation good remains to be seen, but I, I think I would like to invite them. And by then, of course, would have had chats with Danny Moody, and will be even better informed uh, to perhaps put these people on the on the spot. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right. Are you happy with that, Emma? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And then Tony. 
uh, just for information, um, the Northamptonshire Local Access Forum is the authority that deals with public rights of way um, as, as an advisory body for uh, previously North Amps County Council. It continues to be the advisory body for both the two new unitary authorities. Okay. And it's um, Kia WSP. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, well, let's get go through this then. Set up, you know, the, the objective being that June meeting will have them here, but we've got a lot of work to do ahead of that. Um, and, you know, Tony, please continue to work with Emma in terms of correspondence. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right, the, uh, the, the, the next one then on the social media reports reference the Riverside Inn. Um, sorry, I, I have to apologise. I haven't seen any of the social media reports. Um, yeah, this was flagged to me by um, a planning officer at East, well, it was at the time, East North Ants Council, just to say that a, a, a member, a resident of Arundel had, had uh, raised the issue um, <clears throat> and that they had, um, in, uh, they'd uh, set up a new enforcement case. Um, I don't, I've heard nothing since, but then after that, Ian had, already, had seen some of the uh, messages that were out on Facebook. So we just thought we would raise it. But as I say, I've not had anything since. Okay, Jerry. <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've followed some of it on the social media as well, but I don't, I don't think there's anything that we need to respond to. I mean, it, you, we, I think we all are pretty familiar with the situation. Doesn't it, you know? Us making a comment is not going to be terribly helpful. I think it's there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, and Ian, uh, there was just one comment uh, asking if we and other councils uh, would be able to approach English heritage. And I, I don't know what the technicalities are, but whether it's something that could be discussed in the rural forum at their next meeting. Mm -hmm. A good idea. Um, David, sorry, David, I get a problem with Anne, it keeps coming up. My recollection is that we tried that some time ago, um, right. and English Heritage weren't interested at that point. It's not to say there might not be at this stage, but uh, it, it is something that was explored many years ago. Yeah, fine. Uh, Cl Clive. Um, you, well, you all might know my views on, um, on the Riverside and how important it is to the town. Um, I think it's something that the new council and and the town itself the business forum and everybody else is a, is an issue that we shouldn't let go and it will make uh the perfect as i've already as you know my views on museum and art center as the perfect entrance to roundel um on its yeah. on the bridge i mean i think we can still put more pressure on the rothschild foundation i think there's lots of uh, there's lots of avenues to explore and i hope that uh, it, when it does come to something, and I, 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 I see your point, Jerry, there's no point really discussing it, but um, when it does come to something, there's something positive is, and there's pressure put on people to make it happen. Yes, okay then. Well, I'll, I'll leave you know, to the next council to look at that. Um, I do know that um, Ashton, um, pe particularly the people living opposite there, uh, are interested in joining uh, Amdel, you know, as part of the Amdel town. So um, you know, again, we've got more people who can uh, join the join forces. Okay, we'll leave that there then. Um, an update on Fletton Field. So uh, back into what Tony said. Um, you know, I've, I've read a lot of the correspondence over the last uh, few few weeks, and you know, tremendous effort again has been started on Fletton Field, and and some of the uh, visuals and sketches of it, you know, really look exciting. Um, I know we've got, you know, we're into a new council. Um, the, the issue that I see is that we have put in our uh, request for it to be an asset of community value and the change of council should not uh, stop that current process. So I don't think that we need to restart it, but we do need to have an answer from N NNC about what's happening to it. And what I couldn't see in my own search of the um, the ENC uh, site was any reference to conversations with the councillors on the subject, and yet I know those conversations took place. Jerry, I thought Rupert, I thought Rupert's suggestion was a good one. To be honest, just banging another letter with you know pointing out that they didn't resolve it before 
uh, yeah, Ian's system was dissolved. Yeah, as a, as a letter, yeah, rather than another application. Yeah. Well, whatever's appropriate, I don't know. But yeah, yeah. I, I think a letter's fine. I don't want to go in another application because essentially they they haven't addressed the one that's on the table. Yeah. Well, presumably that's business that's held over from from yeah. ENC that they need to deal with. So we well, can get I'm, clarification I'm, of that, can't we? I mean, if it's not, yeah. If they're not treating it as un unresolved business, then they can. Then they we, we need we may need to. But if we don't, then fine. Yeah, Emma. Yeah, the, the last correspondence I had with um, the corporate team was that they were, were, were looking into it. Um, <clears throat> now, I don't know what's happened to that corporate team because I've, I've tried to get hold of them. I've rang the number that they've given me and I'm just getting no answer from any. So I don't know <clears throat> whether they've moved, whether those people have no longer worked there. Um, Okay. But I'll see what I can do. I'll see if I can find somebody else. <clears throat> okay. And David? Well, it seems to me if there's a statutory time scale for the council to determine something and it's failed to act in that period, we should write to them and point that out. We should copy that correspondence to our MP. We should ask him to take it up at the highest level with NNC um, and make something of it because uh, it's really not a very impressive start for the new council that one of the first things that's going to happen is that a town council is going to say, you're in breach of your statutory duties, you failed to determine this. Um, I mean, theoretically, you could probably take them to court, but um, that might turn out to be a sledgehammer to crack a nut rather expensively. But I do think that if we draw to their attention their failure to comply and try and get the big guns on board with Tom, it might work. Okay. <clears throat> so we can draft a letter, Emma. Then I'm yeah, I can do that in my uh, next two weeks. The the other thing I'm feeling in this subject is that um, NNC will now have a conflict of interest in assessing this field as an asset of community value when they are the property owner. And I would appreciate Danny Moody's advice on that mm -hmm. that subject. You know, because they you know they clearly it's in their interest to sell the place off and then take the cash for it. Okay, with that then I'll, I'll move on. Um, and sorry, Tony, just in case you were about to go, really do want to thank you and the uh, the, the other people who have been involved in, in getting this going again. I'm, I'm staying for a while longer. You're, you're very welcome. Thank you. Right, receive the uh, report from Northampton Highways um, reference potholes in Andal and speeding uh, uh, traffic. I think we're missing one. Uh, I think there's one just before that. <clears throat> oh yeah, sorry, the dog waste bins. Yep. Oh, and I think right. there's one before that as well. <laughs> um, the uh, traffic survey. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Let me get back on the agenda and stop scribbling on my piece of paper. Right. <laughs> Consider a request to carry out a traffic survey in Andal. Yes, Peter. I don't know anybody uh, that would not welcome that. Uh, I think it's it's a really important thing to do because with the higher traffic volumes we've now got through Oundle, we've got to sort of try and do something to stop some of it coming in here. Yeah, okay, thank you. And Jerry? Uh, I think the important point is that the last one was 10 years ago now. So, you know, it's, it's a long time ago really and there's quite a lot of change in the last 10 years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and it, any, you know, there's a lot of people express views, but some factual background would be good to know as well. Yes, good. And uh, David? I totally agree with Jerry. I think we need it um, because I think we need data. There's a, there's a lot of views and people on two sides of the argument and the data will make it clear to us what we need to do. Yeah, okay. And Malcolm? I think it's good to do a transport survey, not just traffic. Uh, I think we have to be very clear on our objectives of the survey and then engage with, um, perhaps engage with North Northampton traffic engineers instead of trying to uh, tell them what they should be doing, well, if you like, or try, try to do traffic engineering when we're not the experts. So I think we should engage with them very early. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, thank you. Ian? Um, just to show Malcolm that I listen sometimes. I've actually, the, the document that, that Emma's put in the pack, it does say Andrew Transport Survey mm -hmm. for exactly that reason. 
Um, and I think you're absolutely right. I think we're almost, in my mind, not just looking at what the transport situation is now, but what it might be like in five or 10 years with all the changes that are going to happen. And um, as you say, it's not about telling people the solutions. It's about helping find solutions that everyone agrees. Because certainly when you talk to some of the people's at highways, what seem like obvious solutions aren't tenable for really logical reasons. And, you know, but we need some, some, some data and some expert advice about ways to find solutions that work in lots of different ways, whether it's cycling or speeding or lorries or whatever it happens to be. Yes, um, and Malcolm again. Sorry, um, I think it might be helpful to break down the survey into certain objectives like environment, environmental objectives, uh, safety, where we, we could actually do simple surveys, seeing if people are speeding or whatever, or looking at uh, access to schools, um, access to the sound centre to encourage business there and help business, and that would encompass parking and so on as well. So if we could be very clear on the objectives and actually structure it maybe a bit more than we're doing here. Yeah, sure, certainly. Okay, so we definitely want to carry on with this one. We've got a full uh, support for it. Hang on, we've got uh, David and Peter then, the other David. Well, it, it, it follows Malcolm's point. If we do these every 10 years, then it's got to be something we put a lot of effort in rather than just do it for the sake of doing it because you didn't do it 10 years ago. Yeah. So I'm behind Malcolm's and Ian's viewpoint that we should make this a proper job. Yeah, and uh, Peter? I think... I agree with everybody. I, I, I don't think there's any sort of uh, shortcut to a, a proper, tra proper traffic uh, survey. But I also think we shouldn't just look at Oundle because Oundle obviously is a central point. But I mean, you know, you've got the villages and, and, the, and the small areas around Oundle that need the same sort of uh, uh, traffic report to see what's happening there as well, because some of them are, are overrun with traffic. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and, and parking and things like that in some of the villages is, is, is diabolical. So I think you need to have a, a very broad picture and it needs to be combined with uh, a way of, of, of getting the traffic out of the towns and out of the villages so that we don't destroy everything that we've, that, that, yeah, you know, yeah. all our residents and past and in the future uh, look forward to, to coming to Oundle yeah, yeah. and in this area. Yep. Ian, and then um, um, just just touching on what Peter was saying, I think that the, the bigger picture is really important. And again, it seems a really obvious way in which the rural forum can work. We might also be able to work with some of the other councils on paying for it. I got in touch with the people that did the last one, and they said that one cost twelve thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds. So you know that was heavily data driven, really brilliant, exciting, but that's quite a large number. And if we make it bigger and bigger and bigger, it's probably going to cost more and more and more, I suppose. So, um, you know, it's something that I think will probably take a while for us to set up exactly what we want, but um, it's, it's worth doing. But the, the bigger the, the remit, the bigger the cost, but the bigger the remit, the bigger the, yeah. the ability to share some of the pain, perhaps. But, but surely in this, you know, highways, uh, NNC highways have an obligation to, to mm -hmm. carry out this sort of task, and it shouldn't be down to us to pay for it. I'm sure that's right. Yeah. So we've got Rupert and then uh, and then David. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, in fact, picking up your point, <clears throat> uh, I strongly suggest that before um, uh, b b before the town council commits itself to any way forward, it <clears throat> contacts a gentleman called Graham Kane, um, who is. Uh, assistant director, but really director of highways and waste. In other words, um, the head of highways at Northamptonshire, North Northamptonshire Council. In fact, <clears throat> Emma uh, has his name and particulars on the list I sent her about the key people already up and running in the new council. Okay. Uh, Graham will take a global view and point us in the right direction with, without ours at town council spending <coughs> any money unnecessarily. Thank you, thank you, Rupert. Uh, David, you want to say something? <clears throat> Two things occurred to me. I mean, clearly there's a real groundswell here that we need to put something in place, but I think it's very clear that we also need 
to understand exactly what our objectives are. And you know, Malcolm's made a point about various different types of areas we might be looking at. So we clearly need to understand what it is that we might want to take forward. And I think whilst we're thinking about that, um, the Rural Coordination Group, the plan was that we would try to set up a meeting towards the end of May uh, with all the new councils and councillors in place. And it seems to me that taking this concept to them for their input would perhaps be a pretty useful thing to do. Uh -huh. but I can see that it may take us two or three months, quite frankly, to get to a point where we have a, a clear enough brief to go out and find out just what it's going to cost us. I don't think we can expect any help from highways. They'll say it's their job anyway. But the reason we're looking at it is because we don't think highways have been doing a good enough job over the last few years. We've yes. seen the problems, which they seem to ignore. And so ultimately, we have to fight them at their own game, produce a report that they would find difficult to argue with and insist it's taken into account uh, as we go forward, particularly with some of the major planning applications that are in the pipeline and others which we know will follow sooner or later. Okay. No, I think it's a good point, David. And uh, I, I, you know, I feel that although it sounds a bit pessimistic in not being able to get them to do it, you're quite right that we might need to do something ourselves. And then <clears throat> Ian's point about the cost of them, it's, it's you know, bang, bang for the box, you know, what, what is it we actually need to get the argument over? So I think we've got a working party who needed here. I think that your uh, rural, uh, Andal and rural districts is, is where it should all pull together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that you know, to put a May date when the new council is on board. Yeah. Okay, then. Well, thank you for that. So, you know, it, it is absolutely crucial with, because of the scale of the new developments that are pictured in this area. And we are going to drive traffic out of Andal into the villages, so we need to be together on it. Thank you. Right, so now we're into uh, dog bins um, on the entrance to Fletton Field. Yes, this was a, um, a request from a resident. Um, and because it was on the uh, Fletton Field land, um, I suggested calling highways. But then highways came back and said, it really, sh it really sh the application should come from the town council. So that is why it's now onto our agenda. Okay. And do we have to pay for them? Um, well, I, I, it's their land. Yeah. Um, but if we don't, then they they might just say no. We're not going to put them there. Okay. Um, so it's a bit of a catch twenty two situation. Right. So I've got Peter and then Jerry. Yeah. Well, I, personally, I think you should put the. Uh, uh, dog bins on Flettenfield because it will actually strengthen, I know it's a little thing, but it will strengthen the, uh, the, the case we have for it to be a community area for Roundel. Uh, but the only thing I would, I would worry about is that uh, being able to uh, collect the mess uh, from those particular bins. I mean, uh, would, uh, would the NNC be able to do that or would we have to make sure that our people do it? Um, we, it would be NNC. At the moment, it's something that ENC do. Um, they collect all of the dog mess bins from all of the bins on the highways. Um, and they also collect the ones that are on our land, but we have to pay for that. Right. But if it's their land, then they should just, they would just collect it. Right. Yeah. But they're on the highways, they're not on Flettenfield itself, they're on the entrance to the mm. Flettenfields, right? And Jerry? Yeah, basically I was going to say that that's in just did is that um, if uh, we can pay for and install the bin on the highway at the entrance to Fletton Field on um, uh, Glatton Road then um, I would be in favour as long as NNC commit to emptying it. I can't see how we can put one at the other entrance because that's not on the highways which is through our car park and around the back of the chapel isn't it. So like, you know, one on the highway on Blackthorn Road seem, would seem to me to make sense as long as an NC are prepared to empty it. Yeah, that's good. 
Uh, if nobody's got any objections, just ask uh, David. Well, um, just to make an observation, um, wearing a different hat, I also sit on Glapthorne Parish Council and they've just had issues uh, with um, NNC because they wanted to put a dog bin on Cotterstock Road. And um, essentially NNC refused to collect from there even though they would drive past it, going from one extant bin to another one, they weren't prepared to stop off and do <coughs> this one. So it isn't a foregone conclusion that mm. they would do it, and we would need to sound them out to make sure that they would first, because I'm not sure we'd want to necessarily take it on ourselves from the point of view of having to get our own people to deal yeah. with that on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So let's take the first step then, Emma, to get a request and see how they take yeah. the request. I think we'd probably learn that from the request. They've sent me a form. Okay. Once I send that in, I think they will say whether they will put one there or not. Okay. <clears throat> so let's do that and then see how it goes from there onwards. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm back where I was about 20 minutes ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, report from the highways representative about potholes. Um, yeah. Um, you, I, I've sent you, you a report that has got a, some correspondence on yeah. that um, although this was this year, we've, we've also looked at this uh, last year as well um, regarding speeding but then also potholes, so there were the two things. Um, you'll see that um, Sarah Barnwell met with the residents and yeah. she discussed potholes but at the same time did discuss uh, the, situ you know, the probability of having a portable VAS sign, a yeah. um, vehicle activated sign. Um, so after she, uh, Sarah contacted me just to say that this is what she said. So I arranged to meet with Steve Barber um, and he's looked at a couple of um, areas on West Street where we could put a sign if we wanted to. Um, and since then has sent me lots more information he's, um, about the section 50 notice and um, quotes from different um, companies. Um, uh, I'm also looking into seeing whether we could perhaps get some funding to pay for this because there is funding out there. Um, so it's whether the council would um, consider purchasing one of these signs um, that we could maybe put up in and around the town in certain areas, but starting on West Street. What, what, what was the approximate cost, Emma? They are, they are in the region of about £2,000, 2000 to 2500 Not ridiculously expensive then. Mm. Right, so in conversation, in discussion then, I've got uh, the way I've just spotted them, D David, Jerry and Clive. Oh, Clive is first, so let him go. Clive, Jerry I, and David. I, I, I think Emma's point is, um, is very, very important. I mean, West Street, yes, there is speeding on West Street, but more concerning, the speeding up Glatthorn Road is is far more dangerous than West Street. And there, there's the school, as as we know, the school coming in and going out. There's lots of blind bends, and it's it's crazy. It's getting worse and worse and worse because people are double parking now on Glatthorn Road, and it's a virtually most of the time it's a single lane road. I know that does hold up the traffic speed. I've been out many, many times in the last month on Glatthorn Road, and there have been people going 50, 60 miles an hour up there. It's crazy. Okay. So we need something on we need something on Glatthorn yeah, Road the, as well. The, the point of the mobile one is that we can pop it up in various. Yeah, no, I, exactly. I mean, I, I, that's what I'm saying. And uh, Emma's point is really important that it does actually move around the town. Yeah. yeah. The sex. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm just going around the screen now, mm -hmm. Jerry and then David. Yeah, I, I, I think we have discussed this before. I thought we'd be generally supportive last time as well. I don't, I'm, I'm not criticising anyone, but, you know, I, I don't know why we haven't just cracked on with it. Um, yeah. It's not too, a huge amount of money. They do work. I mean, when you go through uh, on the 605, even when you go hit the 40 mile an hour sign um, as you come towards Andal, the brake lights come on when that flashes up slow saying down. slow down. You know, it, they do work. We've got obvious locations on North Bridge, on Benefield Road, on Glapthorn Road, on um, Cotterstock Road. There's loads of obvious places to put them. I don't know why we don't just crack on and do this. All right. Uh, David? If you... I, I suggest two. 
not one. Because uh, I think there's, there's, you get an issue like Latham Road, and then you've got other issues. And do you move that camera because it's doing a good job? I mean, I'm not saying permanent ones. Well, that looks I think two gives you flexibility. It's £2,000. We've got a lot of roads coming in and out of Andal. My view is we should go for two. One being a bit more, you know, you know, specific to do with the job for over a period of six months. The other one being there for a couple of weeks, a month to do with issues that crop up. Okay. It will actually slow traffic down in Andal. Right. Very quickly, Malcolm, and then Peter. I just want to back up what, what has been said. I've stood on pedestrian crossings of both Glatthorn Road and outside the wharf, and people are just driven straight past without even noticing I'm there because they're going so fast. Mm. So, and I think that's sort of a safety issue which you might like to look at in your traffic survey. Right. Peter? Well, I, th I think we have uh, the parking issue is, 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 I understand Glathorn Road, but Benefield Road is just as bad and it, it is, it's, it's ridiculous because, you know, even at sort of 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, people coming out of Arundel and into Arundel down Benefield Road have got to be doing 50, 60 miles an hour uh, and, and it's terrible trying to get out, turn right on that road okay. at that sort of time in the morning. So it's not just, I think two is great, but I would, I would, like Jerry, like to see more uh, scattered around the town. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, I've got David and then Emma, or Emma, do you want to just... Yeah, I'll just come in quickly. The, the, the idea for a, a portable sign is you can put it in a road for a period of time, then move it into another road, yeah. so you can yeah, move it around. Yeah, mm. all right. David? Um, I've got no problem with the idea of having one. I've even got no problem with the idea of having two. The only issue I would raise, and it's purely a technicality, but since the item on the agenda is to receive a report, I'm not sure yeah, that I understand that. Why yeah. expenditure tonight. Uh, and if Emma agrees with me, then presumably what we need to do is put it on the agenda for next time with a proper proposal to spend the money. Yeah. 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 And this is just something that came um, as a result of, of what we've got in the report um we have got a we've got a section 50 notice as well that's come through that you, we do have to pay for which is basically the license um that he the steve has suggested that we have it for at the moment north street and west street but he said once you've got your license you can add more and more roads to it so he said um, he's also going to put a, a strip down in west street you know the little rubber strip so we get an idea of the amount of traffic and the, the sort of speeding that we are getting in that street. Okay. Um, so there's a little bit more to do um, yet, but I can keep working to see if I can get some funding to help pay for the uh, signs and, and just sort of get some more quotes as well. Well, you can see from the conversation, I think the, it's the, the, the council, council wants to go ahead with it. So I know we, we, you're busy in May, but it could be a quick agenda item. Mm -hmm. You know, just to say, are oh, we going to spend? And you know, I personally, I go for one to get us going. Yeah, you know, and then uh, look at a second one later on. Yeah, uh, is there something important we need to add? I would just like to say, wouldn't it be just? I know we should have these things, but if we actually put the twenty mile an hour speed limit, right at the bottom of North Street instead of where it is, just past the Arundel School, uh, and put it. At the bottom of ben uh, at bottom of West Street, uh, as you turn in from uh, Benefield Road, that might actually help people reduce the, the reduce the speed as well. So that wouldn't be so expensive because all they've got to do is literally move the twenty mile an hour sign from one post to another post. They're already there. Yeah, there's another consideration then because Sarah did in her report here it was looking at speeding as well as. And this was her, her solution, wasn't it? Mm, yeah. yeah. So for now, I'd leave it that, uh, you know, in the May meeting, you look at buying one of these devices, put it on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, and making sure I don't go too fast. To consider a request from the resident to make a one-way system down to say to office lane. Uh, yeah, this was from, obviously, we've got the temporary uh, one-way system um, yeah. allowing for extra pavement space. Um, and this is a resident of the, the road who said, um, can the town council look at seeing whether we can have this permanently? Yes, P Peter, then David. 
Well, I, I would I would totally agree with the residents. I think it's a damn good idea uh, to have just a one way system in that part. I mean, I would introduce one way systems elsewhere as well. But uh, St. Off's Lane is a good start because I think it does control traffic and it, it, it makes them think about it more uh, going down to the co-op. Yeah. OK, David and then Jerry. I'd take the opposite view. OK, simple. Yeah. And Jerry. David, actually, and Jerry. Oh, sorry, the other David. Uh, um, um, I, I would uh, support it. Um, I Not so much for, because of the one-way system, but because it's so narrow down there. There's no pavement on the side of the road, uh, and the pavement on the um, post office and, and um, um, chemist side is very narrow. So, so... So actually, if you if you had a permanent pavement built out there, you'd have actually a much better walkway for people down there. So and I don't think it's a big hardship for people to go around the other way. I mean, I really don't. So, yeah, I mean, sorry, I'm rambling a little bit, but um, I, I would suggest that the obvious thing to do is just to write to uh, NNC and say this has been suggested. We are undecided what are your views and see what they say because they might come back and just say no anyway all right no i agree um so i don't forgot what order you, you popped up in now i've got val um malcolm and ian go on ladies first uh one way streets like that create rat runs it'll just make it faster and more dangerous because there's the people from bramston house who walk out onto it um and uh the people who get, are going into the co-op where they have to slow down to turn in anyway. Mm. Okay. I think it would be a terrible thing to do. Right, Ian and then Malcolm. Ma Malcolm was first. Okay, Malcolm, then Ian. Well, if the, the road was narrow there, that should slow people down. You've also got the opportunity to put tables outside uh, the coffee tavern, which might solve another problem. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. Go you, Ian. I was just going to say it's something that a transport survey could look at. And on that basis, Emma, how long is the present one-way system in place for? Um, as far as I'm aware, so long as social distancing is in place. So it could end in June or it could go for another two years. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. I, it, I, um, I don't know, I'm reluctant to put it to a vote at the moment. I, I just feel that there's, there's both, both views have been expressed. You know, I'm extremely inconvenienced by it. I, I can't, after so many months, I still can't get to driving the right way around. But, you know, I really do believe that uh, pedestrian uh, footpaths should be wider. And therefore, irrespective of my inconvenience, the one-way system is a better way. Um, Jerry and Emma. I, I don't think we should even consider um, making a decision ourselves. I think, I think we need to take more advice. I think we need to talk yeah. to highways yeah. and get... And get and get get a view. Okay, that's a good idea. Emma? Yeah, that that's what I was going to suggest. I can speak to Sarah Barnwell and just see what's the yeah. you know yeah. how if we want to if we could um, turn it into a permanent one way system. Would highways consider it and um, what we would need to do? Yeah, could you do that, Emma? Yeah. And it's all based on pedestrian safety, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's only now we've done it realised how ludicrous the the paving situation was mm -hmm. there. You know, for our principal short stay car park route. All right, thank you, Emma. Right, um, that's the one-way system. Okay, then the uh, clerk's report. So Emma's put the report out. I've had a look at it. Um, you, 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 you had your you walk around the town, Emma. Uh, yes, with um, with uh, uh, Anna Maria from East Northampton Council. Yeah. Yes. Sounded, sounded constructive. Yes, it was. We, we, um, we've got a leaflet to give all the new business, all the business, not new businesses, the businesses that were opening. Um, so the non-essential shops, the barbers and, and things. And um, having the um, member of um, ENC or NNC from Environmental Health also help because she was there to be able to answer any questions and also just see whether the shops were complying with with the rules that they should be and on the whole they were and, and she was quite impressed really. Yes okay I noted me by some of the social media uh, that's been going on over the last week 
there's a lot of confusion over what people should be doing in the public areas and mm. just leave that otherwise we'll never get home tonight <laughs> yeah. yeah all right anybody else got anything else from emma's report there's an awful lot of detail there on the inquiries that we've had in mm. on uh, david well i could talk about the map and how the police have changed but it's a question of have we got time for it and if you don't i'll do it in the next meeting i'm going to have a report in the next meeting anyway okay then thank you i appreciate that yep Okay, so we'll move on then. Uh, consider whether to go ahead with the um, annual town meeting on the twenty uh, seventh of May. Yes, we, we've um, scheduled an annual town meeting, um, and um, from some of the advice that I've received today, um, I was on a, a course about returning to work after COVID. Um, but we also talked about council meetings because at the moment it's it is it has gone to court about whether the legislation is going to be extended to hold virtual meetings. But as it stands at the moment, that's going to end on the 7th of May. So technically we should all be back in public meetings, um, which I think for a council meeting, um, it's something that I am going to be looking at later this week with the uh, with our health and safety consultant just to see exactly how it's going to work out because we've also got to be prepared for um, whether we can have public in there and if we can how many um, but the annual town meeting on the 27th of May is still going to be before the restrictions are completely lifted so we are still going to be uh, comply with social distancing. So that would mean um, if people are not going to be wearing masks, they would have to be sitting two, two metres apart. If they are wearing masks, they can be a metre apart. But it's just whether, you know, whether we, we're going and we're going to have to risk assess the whole thing. It's whether it's worth doing it or whether we postpone it again. All right. Uh, Jerry. Um, I may be wrong, but um, I think it's pretty clear that we're not allowed to hold gatherings inside of that number of people. Um, we, yeah, I, we can if it's a business. If it's classed as a, biz, as a business. Well, you like say that, but... Mm. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Um, I'm a director of the Maserati Club, and we, our AGM is scheduled to be about the same time. And we've just recently decided to hold it on Zoom mm -hmm. for the second year. Um, I, I we, we had a very effective AGM last year using Zoom. So the uh, the council members or the, the committee members were on um, uh, were were on video and on 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 sound, and the um, the members the, the visiting members were muted, um, so they could hear what was being said and they could raise their hands if they wanted to make a point. Uh, and, and I would say that that is the sensible way to go for it. And I do think we should try very hard to do something this year, seeing as we didn't hold one last year. Yeah. Okay. So let, let Emma just do. do a... Yeah. Just yeah. Just to come back on that, um, I, I questioned this um, today, and um, uh, Marie was going to go back to Danny and exact and find out if a, an annual town meeting is the same as a parish meeting, and he's come back and football legislative ways um, and he's come back and basically said yes he said so when the um, if the legislation doesn't get extended we almost can't hold that meeting on zoom because it won't be classed as a, a, a proper meeting um, so it does it does just depend and hopefully at the end of this week we will hear if virtual meetings can continue um, and whether it's up, you know, whether they're going to say it's up to councils, whether you can, whether you can't. Um, uh, hopefully, they will come back and say we can con continue. Okay. So, Ian and then Peter and then uh, David. Uh, I was going to agree with everything that Jerry said. I think it, it, it's totally mad to do anything else. And, you know, maybe there is a legislative reason to do it, but presumably, if we said we were going to hold the age, uh, an annual town meeting, which we clearly need to do, and then we risk assessed it and said that unfortunately only one person could attend, and so effectively everyone had to attend on Zoom anyhow, but the meeting still went ahead. That would presumably 
meet all the requirements so everyone will be safe and sound and it would be effective and it would go ahead yeah okay and then peter well i i agree with jerry and, and ian you would we, we definitely need a town meeting this year because obviously last year we didn't have one however and i and, and this is where everybody's going to put me up because i can't remember the date when actually we become free of all this which i think is sometime in june 21st of june 21st June. Why don't we just have it on the 22nd of June or whatever the date is? The because the time scale to have an annual town meeting is between the 1st of March and the 1st of June. So we can't yeah. actually sort of mm. vote to put it back because of the COVID situation. Yeah. And, and, and again, I mean, that, that might be different rules for businesses, Emma, but I mean, meeting inside generally is, is, is not June, it's July. Yeah. Um, is it July? Sorry. I, that's, I didn't, that's the reason why we. That's what I'm saying, Joe. Well, I know. Um, um, it, there might be a little subtle difference, but I mean, the reason we couldn't hold our club AGM is because no venue would host us because we couldn't go inside and right. in, in June. There, so, yeah, there so, is that as well. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so, you know, therefore we had to, had to do it on Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, and I say it, worked, it was very effective. It worked very, very well. And, and you know, the people who wanted to attend could attend and they could hear what was, the, was being said. Um, so, you know, I, yeah, I just think it's a very obvious solution. 27th then. David Fuller. Uh, I think we should be uh, positive about this and we must hold it and I think if we hold it inside we do a risk assessment and we have tickets and we give out tickets to the people who want to come limit it then you've got the safety side you also video it so people can go you make it live a live stream online or whatever we can arrange that as well so that nobody loses out and those who want to be there can be there up to a certain number and that way you cover all the bases and you should be fine but we should go for it and if we do it the way we're supposed to do it if it's in, if it's a meeting in a hall fine social distance etc but we shouldn't hide from it we must do it no, I, I, th I think what i'm getting here is we're going to do the preparation for it yeah and you know it's only then a case of where and you know emma you know, you know, I know you're frustrated as we are by it, but you know, can you go back to them and say this absolutely ludicrous situation that they've generated? You know, that we can't, we, you can't book venues mm. on this sort of notice they're giving us. I think um, hopefully we'll hear something at the end of this week that will, that will make it a bit clearer. Um, personally, I think for the amount of restrictions that you would have to put in place for people to be to meet in person it's going to be a very difficult meeting yes because you're not going to be able to have people asking questions they're going to have to be masked up you're going to lose a lot of the um a lot of what we normally get at an annual town meeting i personally think it would be better as a zoom meeting yes. um, and i think you'd get more from it than trying to hold it in person okay. um but it's just whether it's just whether we go ahead and ignore, you know, the advice to say that that wouldn't become a sort of a lawful meeting, um, or whether we just hold it as something different, just an informal way. But either way, we could do it that way as well. Yeah, uh, Jerry, uh, just a wacky thought, but you know, two p.m. on a Sunday afternoon in Flitton Field. Or, but there is that you could do it of an afternoon. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I think there there is a in, there is a rule in the. Um, Arnold Baker book that it has to be after 6 p.m. All right, so that's part wine of the law. And, wine and picnic, then. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, the law, is, the law is very old, it's 1974, yes. so it does need changing. Um, All right. sure it doesn't prohibit, prohibit alcohol. <laughs> yes. I, I presume we just need to agree that yes, it goes ahead, yep. ideally on Zoom, if necessary, outside. And if it has to be inside after 10 o'clock or whatever it is, then we find a way of making sure that it's as online as possible. So we effectively get the safest thing we can. Um, and then we see what comes on Friday or Monday or whenever the great God speak. Well, I, yeah, okay. I, I feel that we need to do the preparation for it. We need, you know, it's a very minimal meeting because if it's going to be on Zoom, you can't keep people's attention for much more than 30 minutes. Um, you know, and you know, we need to get a summary of where we are in that time scale. Mm. Um, yeah, now I know it falls to, on the new council that's going to deliver it, 
Uh, but we, we can, you know, uh, we can dust off one of the old formats, can't we? Well, that was the th next thing I was going to say. Um, we're at exactly a month away from it. Yeah. The agenda is going to have to go out seven working days before the meeting, um, which doesn't give you very many weeks to prepare what you want to prepare for it. Yeah. And who's so, going to do what? It's a, it's a minimal thing. You know, it's essentially, it's going to be the finances, the introduction of the new councillors, and whatever, you know, you might at the next full council meeting decide are the priorities. And from that meeting, you, 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 you know, in your time scale, you have one week then, you know, to finalise it, don't you? Um, I'm just going to check the date of the May meeting. It's the 18th. 18th. So nine Four, days. Five, six. You've, um, on the 18th, that's the latest that the agenda would need to be published. Yeah. yeah we so we, you need to, we need to have it sorted before the 18th. Yeah. Well, Go on. one simple solution is to have a very generic type agenda, mm -hmm. like mayor's report, financial report, and then the content is then within those two. You could just keep it simple. Yeah. Mayor's report, introduce the councillors, and then do a finance report, and that's it, close it. You want to make it relatively quick. Yeah. Uh, Jerry? Yeah, I agree with all that, but just wondering whether it would be possible to try and um, line up a NNC council to come and just say a few words, you know, a very few words to say they're representing us in the new council. Yeah, no, that's I want a good idea. A police person. I want to get a police person in as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay, look, let me, let me sketch something out and then I'll, I'll, yes. I'll share it around. Uh, but, it, you know, it does need to be very quick. You know, uh -huh. Yes. It, it, you know, I say 30 minutes is about as much as... <laughs> we really can cope with. Yes, I agree. Yeah. All right, let me... I'll, I'll do something then. Just and then very we'll, brief, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Update on COVID. Um, right. Sorry, just Emma, on, on that one, the next... The next full council meeting on the uh, 18th is this that outside of this um this zoom um thing that we've got as well yes potentially um that's i've got to prepare and that's what i'm doing on thursday for the fact that we could have a face-to-face -face meeting now the problem with that is um again we've got we, we will be allowed to have the meeting but um i've got to get 11 11 councillors in that room yeah. um two meters apart if we don't want to wear masks a meter apart if we wear masks all the way through but then it's it's whether you can get members of the public in and this whole business this legislation they are um saying that technically if you read the charles arnold baker book it says that the members of the public should be allowed to go to the place where the meeting is being held. Yeah. So yeah. you can't even say, we're going to film it so the members of the public can see it on Zoom. It may not be lawful if you're not inviting them in, but then how do you invite, how do you make sure that you're all socially distant? It's, it's a nightmare. I just hope that they're going to see sense and okay. allow us to continue. Okay, then we carry on till Friday then, see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Right, update on COVID assessment for Flatten House. Um, well, yeah, this is, um, again, on Thursday, John Dawson, our health and safety consultant, is coming in, and we're going to do um, a further assessment of the building yeah. with a view to um, staff coming back. And that, at the moment, we are back, but we're sort of doing a rotor system, but it's whether if we can all come back, <coughs> if the rooms are, um, ensure that people can be socially distant and what things we need to do for staff. Um, and also looking at uh, the rooms for, you know, we're opening up again for people coming into higher up buildings yep. and, um, and also for having council meetings. Okay. So that's taking place this week. All right. Good luck with that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, report from uh, the Your Town uh, uh, chap. Yes. Um, I've sent a little bit of information. Um, 
Um, as I said, in the <coughs> December meeting, um, we had the proposal. East Northampton Council were going to pay for, for him to come out, have a look around the town, and um, produce a report on, on things that he would think that would be good for us and it would you know, generate people coming into the town. It seems as if for all of the town councils, it's all centred about this, this run, this sort of 5K run around the town. Yeah. Um, it is a way of raising money, but it would be a situation where, although they give you a lot of help, they help you with mapping it out, um, they advertise it on their website, um, people can, who, people who want to take part in the run, um, they uh, go onto their website and sign themselves in and pay a fee. We, we do get the funding back, so we get, like, let's say you've got 100 people running and they all pay £10, you will get that money um, that you can uh, raise for a particular cause or, or a charity. Um, and it does look quite, it looks good fun, but um, it would, does mean that you know, we've basically got to get volunteers, we've got to um, organise it. Um, and it's just your thoughts on whether you want, want to continue with that. Right, open, open floor, uh, David. I'm very conscious of the fact that if we carry on at this rate, we will probably finish around 10 or later. I'm going to suggest that we simply defer this item to a later date. I don't think we need to make a decision at this point. Okay. And with the way things are with COVID and everything else as well, I, I think it's premature to make any decisions. Yeah, uh, Emma, are we all right with that one? We defer yeah, uh, I'm fine, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Ian, unless there's something that... Contrary to that, I was going to say I'd, I'd quite happily say let's not do it because lots of people that want to go running do lots of running events already and they don't have to pay for it and we don't have to organise it. So yeah. uh, if we're going to put some effort into something, let's do it in something else. But we can defer it and I'll say that a second time. <laughs> right. Right. So the uh, the the election results. On um, yeah, this was just basically. I mean, you are all aware that it is an uncontested election. Um, we've got some of the um, new new to be councillors here tonight. Um, two are unable to make it, um, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm and also about what we're going to do about co option. Yeah, so I, I, I've got to leave that very much to the new council. But Jerry, yeah, I was just going to say um, I observed that more than half of uh, the parish councils in. North Anston mm. were, were, were uncontested, which is a bit of a sad state of affairs. And thank you very, very much indeed to those people who put themselves forward to our next council. That's very much appreciated and uh, very much look forward to working with you. Um, other than that, I think there's nothing more to be said for now. We'll, we'll, we can consider co-option when we've got our new council going, I think. So welcome on board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, right, to approve a request in the uh, Freedom Leisure to hold a, an Explorer session on the, rec the recreation ground. We'd seen yeah. this before, hadn't we? So, uh, yeah, well, we've had one before. We had one, um, was it in February? February half term? There was a half term. Yeah, when, yeah it, was, it was February half term. Was it February? Yeah, so they're just, it's the same thing. Um, they just want to hold it in, in, the, in August. Well, we had no problems with it last time. Has anybody got any objections? No. No. Okay. No. Emma, approved. Okay. Thank you. Right. Right. Financial back matters then. Bank reconciliation. Anybody notice anything <coughs> on towards there? No. Okay then. So uh, if that's all right, I'd like to propose it. You've got a seconder, you've got uh, Peter a seconder, all those in favour? Yeah, you've got Paul House there, Emma. And then the payments for March. Anybody noticed us paying anybody that we shouldn't have or dubious people? No. Nope. Okay then. There was a, there's, there's no refurbishment of Emma's office in there or anything like that. <laughs> So you'd have to get a loan from a, from somewhere first. Yeah, from a buddy. Yes. When you come, when you next come into Fletton House, you'll see the new press office that we've set up. <laughs> yeah. See all the changes that you've been doing behind. Yeah. Behind. The yeah. Let me propose that then. In a seconder. Yeah. Good. Uh, David Fuller just there. 
And all those in favor? Okay, thank you. Right, uh, receive the internal uh, control check report. This is yours, Jerry. Is there any, any problems on it? She didn't, she didn't have your arm up your back or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're on mute, Jerry, so you can say whatever you like. About her. <laughs> you're, you're muted, Jerry, so square away. Okay. I trust them. <laughs> <laughs> and have checked. <laughs> right, uh, something not quite so jovial then the uh, cemetery fees. Uh, yeah, this was just something that um, Lisa raised with me, um, but we haven't put our fees up quite some time and um, so where it, so should we have a look at it um, and it was going to go on our finance meeting so I've continued it on to this agenda um, I've looked at some fees from other town councils in the East North Ants area and we are quite a bit lower um, but everybody obviously charges a different amount um, and uh, looking at Higham, they haven't put theirs up for the last couple of years. Um, and I couldn't see whether the others have put them up, but it's just right. it's something you want to do. Well, Jerry and then David. Uh, I was going to say, just given that we're, you know, right at the end of this council and that it's not urgent, why don't we defer it to another meeting? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah, I agree. I agree. No, no objection, David Fuller? I'd leave it for a year. Yeah, okay, so let's that, defer it then. Thank you. Um, approved flatten house boiler maintenance contract. Oh, that's very important. Yeah, it, this is, I mean, it's with the same company that installed it. Um, yeah. uh, they have been, um, you know, they have given us a good service. Um, and uh, we haven't actually got any others to compare at the moment. Um, but this, is, this came in and again, it was going to go on to our finance uh, committee meeting. Yeah, I'm desperately looking for the document. What? How much different was it from the previous one? It's the same. It's the same price. They've honoured no the same price. Right. Well, then. Personally, I've got no problem with that. Anybody? No, else? Brain, no, no, no. No. Okay. Do we need to propose that, Emma, or is that enough? Um, it's it's enough that you've all agreed. Yeah. That it's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, then. And then approve the grant uh, for for Blooming Angle. It, 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 it reads badly when it's in Blooming Angle. But... <laughs> Yeah, some say that's not wrong. <laughs> I think I think that's the point, isn't it? It's a bit a bit tongue in cheek. Yeah, <laughs> it's good, isn't it? I like it. Yeah, yeah let's. I'm happy. Has anybody got any problems with it at all? No. No. Okay, so that that's a that's approved then, Emma. Okay. Right. Um, then we're on planning matters. This is over to you, David. You're just receiving your minutes. Well, in terms of receiving the minutes, they're there. Um, obviously, if anybody's got any questions, I'll happily look at them. Uh, but we've got a couple of planning related matters, one immediately following, one uh, to be taken in camera potentially later. Um, so there's nothing particularly there that um, I would draw your attention to. Right. And then we've got the receive the statement from Amber's oh, Hello, Chair. Sorry? Okay. Received the statement from Amber School reference their, their, their piece of uh, field there. I mean, this, well, this is a little bit more worrying, David. Yeah, this is a lot more worrying. Um, perhaps it's not entirely unexpected, uh, other than we went through a process with our own neighbourhood plan where we did a call for sites. Yeah. ENC went through a process in connection with the local plan part two where they did a call for sites. Um, Oundle School didn't seem to be at all interested in putting forward anything at that time. Uh, now we've got a situation where we haven't got a neighbourhood plan, where the local plan part two is already well down the line in terms of moving towards either approval or rejection and suddenly Oundle School start popping up saying, hmm, maybe we should be looking for residential uh, development on this piece of land. Uh, 
we're well aware of the fact that there are two extant outline planning permissions which between them would generate more houses than are required under the um, current core spatial strategy. Uh, not many, but, but more. Uh, we know that over and above that, the ENC Local Plan Part 2 recommends allocating the site uh, off Stoke Doyle Road for another uh, 70 properties. We know uh, that uh, there were two other significant sites that were in our neighbourhood plan, uh, one on Hearn Road, uh, one further along Benefield Road, which actually between the two of them would take a very large number of houses potentially, one of which is definitely getting closer to, to coming forward as, a, as an application, I believe. Frankly, the last thing Alton needs is yet another significant housing development. Um, if Andrew School wants any input from, from this town council, I would suggest that we indicate to them that we think that development of this piece of land at this stage would be entirely premature and they should be looking to put it forward as a potential site for the next iteration of a local plan, uh, that is to say somewhere beyond 2031. Yes. I agree. Yeah, yeah absolutely David. So I don't think there'd be anybody uh, with any different view uh, to Clive? Um, no, just to, to say I agree with David completely. I mean, I think it's, it's difficult to know, one presumes that this is driven by just by finance. It, it's difficult to assume anything else from, from an application like this. Um, so, but that opens, as I've said before, that opens the sort of the gate to anyone any, on any of the land that we know around here is held, held in bank by lots and lots of companies. Just to say, right, okay, great. The barriers are down. We just start building everywhere. And it just makes a nonsense of not over the neighborhood plans, but the local plans and everything else. So I agree with David. Yes, absolutely. All right. So all they've done is informed us. They haven't asked for our input. No. All right. Can I just come back on what Clive said? Yeah. Uh, Obviously, with the government white paper, it does mean that anybody can build almost anything they want, anywhere they want. Right. Well, there you go. You know, so that, that's the big problem. That's why. That's why the, uh, even the local plan is failing because uh, the government will just override anything you want. Yeah. They want, and that's okay. the problem we have. Yeah. Sorry, Ian. I was just going to say that. Um, I hope the school made a big thing a few months ago about planting, is it 200 oak trees on there, Clive? Yeah, I, well, um, I, I physically, personally planted 210. Yeah, and they're all commemorative and there was a big publicity. So hopefully the last bit in the statement about no intention to sell is to be believed, um, though the statement is clearly worrying. But they'd have to chop down a lot of trees to do it. All right, so at the moment we don't need to do anything. We've just logged that they've, they've told us about it. Okay. Right. Thanks for telling us. Yeah. Uh, David, you said there was something else that we might need to take as a confidential one. Yeah, well, it's already on the agenda, so okay. we'll get to it in due course. All right. Yep, I, I see it. Okay. Right. Um, estates management matters to receive the minutes. Um, Peter, is there anything? I wasn't at the last estates management uh, meeting, so I can't actually sort of uh, move forward and in fact I asked I did ask Lisa for an update and she hasn't sent it to me so oh, yeah. I'm not sure what happened. Right so just moving on then the uh, the recommendation uh, for the future of the hub space in Fletton House. Uh, Jerry. Again I think it's not appropriate to do this now because we've got a new council coming in. Yeah okay I appreciate that one. <laughs> so <laughs> if everybody's happy Let's defer we this. Don't want on, to face it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, pass the ball. Pass the ball. I am still going to be actually, there, by the way, nice Clive. Well, not unlike you, I'm still going to be there. there. Right. Right. The ball. I, just, I just meant it's great to have it sort of roll along. Let's get. Uh, yeah, uh, it's fantastic, isn't it, Clive? Just, just let it go on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a hospital pass? 
Okay, so to approve the, uh, the new tenant for um, Office 4 in the courthouse. Sorry, can I just quickly say, I'm probably going to move it to the June meeting because yeah, yeah. the May meeting is going to have quite a bit on it. Right. So I hope, are you happy for me to move it yeah. to the June meeting? Yes, I'm sure. July. <laughs> Christmas would be good. Yeah. 2023. <laughs> Right, so we were talking about now the uh, new tenant for Office 4 in the courthouse. Uh, yes, um, there's one, one vacant, um, let me just find my notes, uh, office and somebody's come, you know, we've got somebody come forward that would like it. Um, they are a, uh, got all this hub stuff that I've not moved on. I hope you all read all of the uh, information about the hub that I sent you. We did. Um, I'm Ready just to trying to <laughs> Yeah, no, some of it was from the previous reports. We've yeah, had. yeah, you'd already so, seen some of it. I'm just sorry, I'm just trying to. Proving I had read it ever, Emma. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, uh, the company, um, it's a sort of cloud based company. Uh, that's why they've asked to have a separate um, split for electricity because if somebody blows the fuse from another office, they need to keep. Um, the uh, their ele electricity supply there. So um, uh, Lisa was asked whether the, the council would be prepared to pay for that or whether you would expect them as new tenants to pay pay for it themselves. What's the cost? It's £1,000. Okay. I think they should pay for it. I think they should pay for it. Absolutely. 50-50, be fair. We, do we have... We did pay for a few things for um, Swimex, um, uh, some trunking to put uh, different wiring in for them. So you know, maybe a 50 50. Oh, I'm happy with 50 50. And Jerry? I was going with 50 50 as well. Okay. It just um, showing fairness. Yeah, Ian? Yeah, I would agree. And also, we do get something out of it because we get a split electricity supply in the long term. So 50 50 seems fair. Yeah. Uh, sorry, just remind me on, on electricity. We don't charge them for electricity, do we, at the moment? No, well, they, they pay their rent um, and um, we use Berries as our agent who you work out the rent per square metre, um, yeah. but we don't pay any additional char charges for, for water or electricity to anybody in them. Yeah, no, Jerry? We maybe should think, we maybe should think about that because if they've got a big demand for electricity... Uh, we maybe ought to think about that. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what it's going to be like because being cloud-based, they're not going to have big servers and things, I'm assuming. Mm. Well, they might be. Unless they are the cloud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there is, just to give you some things, because they tend to charge things back at home as well, you'll find that, we're, we're finding that schools save a lot of money by in the some respects being cloud-based because they take the machines out with them and go anywhere with them. So there are savings. So it's not a simple matter of just because they've got lots of machines, it's going to be expensive. So cloud-based machines generally use less power than, uh, as you said, servers and, and traditional desktops. You know, they, they've got less, less insight. Well, I, I know that we can be into more expensive with sort of putting a charging meter or a, a thing with shillings in it, but um, let's just okay, leave, I mean, let's, Let's go on the simple one then. The, yeah. the offer is a 50-50. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Right, uh, to receive an update on the uh, damaged ch uh, churchyard wall. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Um, basically, um, I've, I've explained, have I, via email as to what happened. Somebody reversed into the wall, not the yeah. wall down. Um, the church, um, they had their architect came out and did a specification on the wall, so that um, all the quotes that we're going to get, they're all working to the same spec. I've had two quotes come in. I did ask a third company, um, so I'm just waiting for that to come in. Um, hopefully, at the end of this week, that will then go off to our insurance company. We're going to deal with it all. Um, okay. But uh, just to let you know that it's, it's still ongoing. All right, so it's in and I've had. I've had to apply for a list, list B to the diocese um, to get permission for the wall to be repaired. Yeah, okay. Still All right, to so work. nothing more we need to do at the moment, it's just churning yeah. along. Yep, 
Okay, thank you. Um, right, and then the uh, the wall on QVH. This is more uh, interesting. Yeah, because it was yeah this is, um, I mean, I, I've, I know it's QVH matters, but we haven't got a QVH meeting until June, no. and I, I just wanted to update you on it. Um, we've searched all our records. I, David, um, he had a, has had a look at the land registry document. Hunter Coombs have looked into it. We can see, can't see anywhere which would say um, with our, you know, with the QVH that that wall is part of us. It, it, it's, it's not. I haven't been able to find anything in, um, in minutes that says at any point the, the QVH Trust decided to take responsibility of that wall on. Um, so I've asked Lisa um, to go back to the person who lives there to say, look, we have no record of this being our responsibility. Yeah. So I've asked them to look into it themselves. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Unless anybody's got any objections? No. No, okay. No. Thank you, Emma. Right, um, <laughs> update on the wildflower flower project. And I do apologize, Ian, uh, been a little bit awkward in this, uh, this area, but... Um, no, not, not at all. Um, just, just to give everyone a little bit of feedback, um, a number of people have come forward who are willing to help. Um, two or three of them are, are, are pretty keen and pretty good. One of them's a, a wildflower expert from Cambridge University, so he knows what he's talking about. Um, we're looking at a couple of sort of test sites about the size of the one that Blooming Out will have put on the um, highway land strip down the end of King's Road. Um, uh, nothing's exactly decided where or when yet. We're looking at a mix of seeds, uh, we're looking at a time scale, um, and the idea is that we'd probably be looking to sow for, for next year um, now. So, um, and obviously, once we get a bit more clarity on where and when and what and why and how, um, letting all the residents know, talking to them, there's some really good uh, links with Bug Life, charity local but national at the same time, about engagement and stuff like that. So, um, and then using that experience to build up together with whatever highways and blooming handle have got together for other ideas in the long term so it's very much a long-term thing that's chugging along that's it oh, very good so but when you say planting for next year that needs that's going in this autumn is it uh probably it depends what there is but over the summer we'd make sure that everyone knew what was what and where it was and why it was yeah and what the site right. appraisal stuff was yeah yeah I'm, I'm trying to persuade somebody in my house to turn over my my lawn to wildflower. You need cows and sward. We had a really good meeting at Snipe Meadow about cows and sward today. As long as you don't need a lawnmower, it's a damn good idea. Cows. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah you could cool. actually put sheep on that part because OTC are allowed to use put sheep on land. Yeah. David Fuller. Is this similar to the scheme in Warmington? Where they've got verges which are wildlife and they've got little signs saying this is a wildlife refuge i think that's what's being done around the verges in uh, king's road etc but i think the idea is it could be expanded elsewhere it's excellent honestly anywhere that's it's it's, a, it's nice to see to be honest mm. thank you no very good right uh, consider upgrading the skate park equipment so we've seen the plan um is this another one, Jerry, you think we get ought to defer? June, <laughs> June, I think, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I think it's sensible again. No, I, I, I mean, I'm not being flippant. I think, you know, it's inappropriate for us to commit £50,000 when we're all about to be re-elected. Yeah. No, it's a big expense and it should be taken that way. Ian? Uh, just the only thing is it, it looks great and, and everything Ramp Charles done there has been great so far. But the big move from lots of the users is to get the surface sorted first, um, which I think Emma or Lisa is. Yeah, I thought we were hoping that we, I was going to have a quote, but yeah. uh, it hasn't come through yet. So uh, that, that's the big thing which we consider in 2025 or whenever we look at it in the end. <laughs> All right. Uh, just quickly, if I can. I think. If you look at modern skate parks, as in ones that are done before hour, after hours, a lot of them tend to go under. So ours is sort of over the ground and those that go under much more concrete. There's a good one down at um, Thrapston that we should look at as a model because this is an opportunity to rethink it 
uh, rather than just try and rebuild what we've already done and then eventually over time it gets degraded quickly. Mm. That's all I'm going to say. And I think the new council should take it on, but I think we should rethink it. Okay, I'll leave it till then. Right, uh, communications working party? Well, as. <laughs> Well um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've sent an email out with the the, the new Love Andrew website um, front page, and it, it looks really good. Um, Emma and Rebecca, in particular, have done a lot of brilliant work. Uh, talk trying to translate some of the stuff I've talked about into reality as well. And I think Justin's done a great job. The video looks really good. Yeah. Andrew Business Association have spent the grants really well, um, and hopefully, when it goes live, it will all be very good. Um, we've put a big center page, I keep calling it a center fold, which is probably in a <laughs> center page of the, the sort of whole thing. And the idea of a sort of, I know, a bumper or window sticker that we can involve businesses with later in the year just seems to sort of hopefully sort of bounce us economically into the next few months. But um, yeah, hopefully it's all good. That's it, isn't it, Emma? That's all we're Yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah. Oh, just the, are we gonna put off a, um, an article in Outdoor Live until after the... What's, what's, what's the next deadline? I think it's one this... the end, I think, well, soon. I think it's now. It was the 26th or 28th of April. Yeah. But mm. it would be nice if we could do something with the new councillors, which will effectively be a month later. So if, yeah. if they can get us a deadline, that would be brilliant. Yeah. Mm. Okay. No, thank, thank you, Ian. Yeah, um, just over my, my period in the council, you've made a tremendous difference in our comms. Mm, absolutely. Well, no, uh, Rebecca and Code all the work. <laughs> right. Um, correspondence for information, the employment law up, up, uh, up newsletter. Mm. Right. And then uh, we're into confidential matters. So uh, at this point, um, I need to say goodbye to the, uh, uh, the the visitors and thank you for your attendance and those that you're going to be Bye, here on, on the next <coughs> one. Yeah, <laughs> I welcome to the new council. A couple more to go. I need to go as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, Luke. See you soon. <laughs> yeah. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> We, yeah, we just need to do the vote then now. Right. Can I just apologise for being late? I had the agenda and everything on my desk next to the laptop and then suddenly, for some reason, thought it was Monday and, of course, it's Tuesday. So, um, I thought you just simply fell asleep, Val. It happens to us all. Girl. Only! Kick it, kick it down the road. Come along tomorrow I'm night. I'm sorry about that. Don't worry. <laughs> Do you, do you want to do the vote and then I'll, I'll pause the uh, recording? Yeah, okay, so we'll take a vote. We're going to a confidential uh, session. All those in favour? Have I got a proposal and a seconder? I'll do that. Propose it and second. And second it. Yep, all right. Then all those in favour? And all those against? Right. It's the last meeting. I might as well make sure I put the last time <laughs> up for doing this. Putting now. Okay then. So as far as the uh, recruitment of the maintenance operator, uh, operative we, is concerned, we've agreed to make the appointment. And then as far as the residential update, the update has been received. Oh. Right. Sorry, I'm falling asleep. <laughs> well, mostly due to Jerry, we've managed to get it done before. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know my chairman style. <laughs> yeah, quick. I can imagine you playing football in the same one, just kick it down the field, see what happens. <laughs> it works. Sometimes the best way. Yeah, okay then. Well, right, so um, thank you all once again, uh, not just for tonight, but you know, for but, you know, three great years, and I do apologise for not being able to stay on a bit longer, but um, I do need at least a year out and, and mm. try and get, get me out around. You might be well aware that I'm well out of my comfort zone on this type of, of, of thing. It's, it's, it's not me, you know, and it doesn't matter what I might appear like, I'm not like this at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, good. We, we've uh, enjoyed your leadership. Yes, definitely. Yes, we have. Yeah, yeah. thank yeah. you. Yeah. And likewise, for those of you leaving, I you know uh, Malcolm, um, Peter, 
Um, Clive, is it, no, you're not. You're staying. Are I'm, you? No, I'm leaving. You're leaving. No, I'm leaving. Yeah. No, I would just like to say the the, the, the I think it's five years. I've had just over five years, and it, it's been um, really, really interesting. And and much the same as Tony, I'm sort of taking a sort of sabbatical. I think from the whole process, um, and I just like to to thank everybody. And 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 I genuinely think that some. The seeds of change have, have been planted and there will, you know, the, the town matters are actually beginning to, the, the things that we've been working on are beginning to grow. And I think it, that's really, really important. And just to say thank you. Thank you all. You might yet see me again, but uh, <laughs> after with or the without the moustache. <laughs> Probably without and no hair. But, uh, <laughs> You'll be most welcome, Clive. All right. Don't, Can I just don't, say as well, thank you very much because it's been five years for me as well, and uh, uh, you know I think we've all worked pretty well together, uh, and, uh, and we've done some really good, amazing things. There's some big things we didn't get right, but most of it we've, we've managed to sort of shoulder on uh, and keep going. Yeah, Thanks, I, I was just going to say I think uh, you need to be careful. Who you accept a drink from at the pub because you might find the OTC shilling in the bottom of your pint glass. <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you very much for putting up with me all these years as well. And I think the council's left in good hands. Uh, you have a fight, I think, with uh, NM. Well, with not necessarily a fight, but we're, you're always going to be in a, a weak position compared with uh, the other councils, really, NNC and whatever, who really don't <clears throat> i don't think it, i think are pretty arrogant and and undemocratic but um, i'm sure you'll stand your ground thanks for keeping us on the straight and narrow malcolm absolutely <laughs> yes <laughs> really good mate thanks tony if i can just break with the agenda and and illegally propose that as and when we're allowed to meet together again formally in a big wide world informally uh, we all get together and do this again over a glass of something. Definitely. Mm. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Bring, bring the OTC shillings, Emma. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have forgotten by then. Yeah. <laughs> all right. What, the shillings or the drink? <laughs> no, you'll have forgotten what it's like. You'll be desperate to come back. Yeah, okay. All right, well, thank you all. Thank you, Tony. Thank, thank you to everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.